The very first big trade has happened between four different teams. And before we get to the content, I wanted to let you know that myself and my Corzemba are going on the Laced Up Podcast's YouTube channel to do a live stream discussing all of the trades. It's going to be live so you can ask us questions as well. And a link to that's going to be in the description down below. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? The biggest storyline for the Sacramento Kings, aside from trading Tyrese Halliburton, was what were they going to do with Marvin Bagley III, the former number two overall pick in the 2018 NBA draft that is most famous for being drafted after DeAndre Ayton and before Trey Young and Luka Doncic, didn't really have the greatest start to his career. I guess he's at a point where no matter what, I don't think the Sacramento Kings will retain his rights once his contract ends. So they were looking to at least get some type of return for him. Now, I could have never imagined in a million years that this would be the trade that would happen in order to get Marvin Bagley off of the Sacramento Kings. Because according to Shams Charania, the Sacramento Kings are trading Marvin Bagley III to the Detroit Pistons, sources tell him, and Sam Amick. Now, when I got this piece of information, Shams came out with another tweet saying, the Los Angeles Clippers are trading Serge Ibaka to the Milwaukee Bucks sources tell the athletic and the stadium so at this point you're kind of thinking okay well these two trades happened really quickly yet we didn't find out what the return was for either of these players a few moments later shams tweets out that the pistons are trading josh jackson and trey lyles to the sacramento kings sources tell the athletic and the stadium which is a four-team deal with the detroit pistons the sacramento kings the milwaukee bucks and the los angeles clippers the toronto raptors are trading goran dragic to the san antonio spurs for thaddeus young so to to completely recap this insane trade, the Toronto Raptors will get Thaddeus Young, Drew Eubanks, and a Pistons second rounder. The Spurs get Goran Dragic, a top 14 protected Toronto 2022 first round pick and protected 1-13 to in 2023, turning into future seconds. Now here's where it gets interesting, because according to Adrian Wojnarowski, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to be sending Semi Ojale and Rodney Hood to the Los Angeles Clippers in this deal as well. And the Kings will acquire Dante DiVincenzo in this trade. So I know this sounds very freaking confusing. So let me summarize all of it for you. All right, so according to Adrian Wojnowski, the full trade participants, the Sacramento Kings get Dante DiVincenzo, Trey Lyles, and Josh Jackson. The Milwaukee Bucks get Serge Ibaka, two future second round picks in cash. The Los Angeles Clippers get Rodney Hood, Semi Ojale, and the Detroit Pistons get Marvin Bagley Jr. So let's start out with Marvin Bagley Jr., shall we? Because this is a guy that I've actually been following since he reclassified in high school so he could declare for the NBA draft one year sooner. Originally, a lot of people don't know this, but Marvin Bagley Jr. was supposed to be in that same exact Duke recruiting class as Zion Williamson, RJ Barrett, and Cam Reddish. And ultimately, he reclassified because he wanted to hit the NBA sooner so he could get the bag sooner. And to say that he's had a very very rocky start to his career has been an absolute understatement. The interesting part about Marvin Bagley Jr. is you don't really know whose fault it is for the lack of his development. I mean, he was in the doghouse when Luke Walton was his head coach, but even prior to that, during his rookie season, he averaged 14 points per game off of 50% shooting, shot 31% from three. I felt like the potential was there but Sacramento didn't really do much to do whatever they could to develop the kid because the next year, obviously, he only played 13 games because he was also dealing with an injury then. The year after was when things got a little bit weirder. He only played 42 games, was also dealing with an injury then. And at this point, he's established himself as an injury-prone power forward or center that has stagnated throughout his entire career. It's really hard to gauge how good he's 
he's going to be mainly because throughout the past four years of his career he's only started in 69 games nice and only played in 148 games in total i don't know man because typically sacramento isn't really the greatest at developing their talent of course you have tyrese halliburton and you have De'Aaron fox and then you had demarcus cousins and isaiah thomas also broke out there in general i don't think if you're a player like marvin bagley and your career is going on the same trajectory as marvin bagley it's necessarily the best place for you i think going to a team like detroit playing with a playmaker like kate cunningham with a roster that seems to be focused on acquiring draft picks and acquiring youth and taking chances on said youth bear in mind that the detroit pistons have hamadou diallo on their team meaning that they're just trying to take swings at draft busts that were considered to be high potential players. I like to call this the 2017 to 2018 Brooklyn Nets method because they did the exact same thing. They took shots on players like Jaleel Okafor and D'Angelo Russell, and they were able to find someone in D'Angelo Russell that they were eventually able to flip and assign and trade it for Kevin Durant. Now, when you look at the other two teams, obviously we know what the Bucks are getting in Serge Ibaka. Serge Ibaka isn't close to the player that he once was when he was with the OKC Thunder. He has definitely lost a step, but he hasn't really been playing as many minutes this game. But last year, he kind of lost a bit of a step with the Los Angeles Clippers. It could have just been the system that the Los Angeles Clippers were playing him in. But when when you look at what he does really well he's able to shoot it from three really well shooting 39 percent from the arc he still has a great interior presence and is still a positive defensive player and he should be able to fill that role player role very very well it's unfortunate that the bucks have to give up dante DiVincenzo in order for this to go down but i can understand why they would make such a move meanwhile you get the sacramento kings who are able to get a nice young shooting guard that i suppose is going to fill the hole that Tyrese Halliburton and Buddy Heald left. I, I'm really, I can't really say that with confidence, but in addition to that, Dante DiVincenzo has been on a bit of a decline over the past year. Now, obviously he hasn't played as much this year. He's only played in 17 games. Last year he was a starter and he shot 38% from three as a starter. This year as a role player, he only shot 28% from three. That is something that is personally very concerning, but I guess they're trying to buy low on this player. I personally don't get the logic. I think they were just doing whatever they could to get rid of Marvin Bagley. But in addition to that, they get Trey Lyles, who has been absolutely balling out for Detroit this year. Now, bear in mind, Detroit isn't necessarily the greatest team. So it does make a lot of sense why out of nowhere, he went from averaging like six points and five points a game with the San Antonio Spurs to 10 points per game with the Detroit Pistons. So the Pistons did a good job pumping up his value. And of course, Josh Jackson, just a draft bust that has been jumping from team to team to team recently. For the San Antonio Spurs, it's kind of funny because they were considering buying out Thaddeus Young and they were able to trade him for Goran Dragic, but also according to Adrian Wojnarowski, the Spurs who are trading for Toronto's Goran Dragic are expected to negotiate a contract buyout with Dragic. Among the interested expect to be interested once he becomes a free agent is Dallas, Milwaukee, Chicago, and the Clippers. Now, if you don't remember, apparently earlier today, there was this rumor that the Dallas Mavericks and the Toronto Raptors were locked in on a trade for Goran Dragic and Kristaps Porzingis. I don't know how far they got in those trade talks. I personally can't imagine a trade being made between those two centered around those two pieces. I just believe they got on the phone, discussed some things and eventually hopped off of the phone. I'm assuming that Thaddeus Young might get bought out too, but that's something else we have to see. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this trade, man. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next trade video.